Hi, everyone. Father Gary here. I hope that uh, you and your families are doing well. I was asked to give a brief presentation on one aspect of Holy Week, and specifically that which has to do with Holy Thursday. However, before I give that little uh, explanation uh, on Holy Thursday, I thought I would just give you um, uh, an understanding of Lent itself. Even though we have lived through many Lents throughout our lives, I hope that you understand that there is two parts uh, to the Lenten season. Uh, the first part begins on Ash Wednesday, and it ends, that first part ends on the Saturday before Passion Sunday or Palm Sunday, which would be the weekend before Palm Sunday. So that's Saturday, uh, just before we begin the fifth week of Lent. That first part of the Lenten season is really about us. Uh, we have this opportunity during the Lenten season uh, to focus on our sinfulness and on our need for repentance. The second part has to uh, do with uh, our Lord. We focus on his suffering, uh, that which uh, takes place on Good Friday, and it literally walks us through his betrayal, ultimately to his death. And so this Lenten season, these 40 days of Lent, really gives us an opportunity to, to learn about ourselves and our need for God's mercy in our life. And it also assists us in terms of understanding why our Lord suffered and died on the cross. Obviously, for our sins, for our salvation. And Holy Week, that, that week that is literally uh, the, the most solemn of all weeks throughout our church calendar begins on Palm Sunday. And we will unfortunately not gather for Palm Sunday liturgy physically in our churches, but hopefully many of you will join us live stream or by way of a YouTube channel. And Holy, Holy Week really uh, culminates uh, with the great victory that will take place on Easter Sunday. There is a movement of uh, all the liturgies. And the very first liturgy that I'd like to focus on is that of Holy Thursday. It's referred to in many ways as Maundy Thursday. In other words, um, Maundy is a Latin word that comes from the word mandatum. And I'm gonna to explain to you what that means, but let me just tell you a little bit about Holy Thursday in general. I think um, when, when we think of Holy Thursday, I, I think we think of the final supper that Jesus has with his disciples, and it's true. But even beyond that, if you were to read St. John's Gospel for that particular evening's liturgy, you would find that God wants us uh, very close to himself. He wants to be present to us. And he does that in three ways in that liturgy. Obviously, the Eucharist, that last supper, the meal before Jesus is going to be uh, uh, betrayed and then uh, condemned to, to die on the cross. Uh, the night before his, uh, his death and crucifixion. That meal uh, really is uh, the, the gift that Jesus gives to the church. He inaugurates, institutes the Eucharist on that evening. And in addition to that, he tells his disciples uh, to, to continue on that, to do it in his memory. And he institutes holy orders. Specifically, he hands on uh, the gift of the Eucharist to the presbyters of the church. And isn't it amazing that through the Eucharist and through holy orders, the priest makes present God's love in all of the sacraments. He does it in the Eucharist and he does so in all the other sacraments. Now, I said I would explain to you mandatum, the mandate or um, the, the the, the final command that Jesus offers to his disciples, but also ultimately to us. That command is to do what he did. And what did he do as he broke bread and shared a common cup? During the meal, Jesus gets up from table and he takes off his outer cloak and he takes a towel, wraps it around his waist, and then takes a pitcher and a bowl. And then he begins 
to lower himself. He's the one who's the master and the teacher, and he becomes the slave and the servant. He's going to teach his disciples something dramatic, how they are called to be of service to others. In other words, they have to stoop down and they have to wash one another's feet as well. Now, what does that say to us in the real world when we don't have slaves or servants at our beck and call? Well, we're all called to be of service to those in need. And it may not be where we have to wash someone's feet, but it certainly means that we have to be a good neighbor. It certainly means we have to be respectful. It certainly means that when someone is in need of some type of assistance, whether it's bodily or spiritually, we have a responsibility to care for them, to look out for them, uh, and, to, uh, and to be present to them in their midst. And isn't that really what uh, God wants of us uh, really to do, to be present to others, especially in their need? So we carry on that threefold um, responsibility uh, that was handed on to us at our baptism, that we are also called not just to be a kingly person, a prophetic person, but a priestly person, a person of service. So I would encourage you as we enter into this holy week uh, to be of service to your families, uh, to your neighbors, even to the church. I know that we, we are in uh, challenging times and I know that uh, life isn't the same, but we have an ability uh, to change the way we look at the world and the way in which uh, we live in the world. And so I hope that my little message about Holy Thursday will inspire you uh, to be of service uh, to one another. God bless you all. Mm -hmm.